1974 was quite the year for motorsport. Emerson Fittipaldi won the second of his two Formula One World Championships in a McLaren Ford. Richard Petty won the NASCAR Winston Cup with over double the points of third place David Pearson. And over in France, a little young boy was born by the name of Sebastian Loeb. But that's not what our focus is on today. Our focus is on the 1.2 mile raceway that opened its gates for the first time in September of that year in the 512 square meter town of Fife in Scotland. The track is known as the home of Scottish motor racing, but you might better know it by the name of Knock Hill Racing Circuit. It only has 9 turns, but this circuit that takes less than a minute to lap around is packed with exciting features, elevation changes and history. But for today, we're going to focus on the most crucial question of all. Is this track worth your money on iRacing as it gets featured in the 2022 Season 1 build? The circuit features four unique layouts, two of which can be run in both directions and another of the layouts designed for Rallycross, which I'll be looking at in a future video. The circuit does also feature a mini tri circuit, but first, let's take a look at the primary circuit the Knock Hill is known for, the International Layout. The Knock Hill circuit is perfect if you're a fan of lower speed cars. By that, I mean a TCR car is excellent around this circuit, as you would expect being a British touring car venue. But also, other cars such as GT4s, Mazda MX-5s, and even the Formula V will be brilliant around here with plenty of passing, especially into the final hairpin which looks to offer itself as a tremendous passing opportunity on the international layout. Cars in the GT3 class, or similar to a Formula 3 or even a Porsche Cup, will be fun to drive around this venue, but I just don't quite think the circuit will offer up the best racing for these cars unless bump and runs are allowed. The circuit is just a little bit too compact to really offer up enough of a chance to get a run on your opponents. And if you're a fan of the really fast stuff, honestly, if you're trying to drive a fast car around here, you're crazy. But then, what does that say about iRacing? In week 9 of the upcoming schedule, IMSA will be racing at this circuit. IMSA! This is not a multi-class track, and I feel like this week will be total chaos. And as much fun as chaos can be, I'd be vouching for many people to be skipping this week. LMP2 cars around here trying to find gaps through GT3s, it's just a recipe for disaster. Turn 1 on this circuit is crazy. It's a high speed approach into a blind right hander where you are left guessing where the track goes. Once you get to the corner's apex, start applying the throttle and hope the car sticks to the ground and that you're on the line for the following sequence of corners. Holding it nice and tight to the left of the circuit through turn 2, the more you track out towards the middle of the circuit on exit here will compromise your approach and exit speed for this next section, so opening up turn 3 and staying to the left is critical to your lap time. Speaking of turn 3, it's nice and straightforward. It's all about getting to the right pedal as soon as you can to build momentum. Turn 4 is a sketchy one in these cars with a significant drop in elevation before a monstrous compression straight afterwards that can unsettle the car, but you're probably not even thinking about that at this point. It's all about the next chicane. Fire it over the left and pray that when you finally see the track again that you're not too far over to the right. Smash that curb as well, and the second you have the car settled and underneath you, get back onto the throttle. This corner is where bravery is rewarded, but can, of course, also be your undoing. If we're on a rally stage, we're about to head into a three right don't cut tyres. This is a tricky corner as I got a massive moment on this particular lap, but it is so easy to do. The inside curb here is so inviting, but taking too much and it will throw you wide in a heartbeat, with the gravel on the outside of the circuit just waiting to invalidate your lap time and destroy your run down the next straight. One corner to go on the track, and this is where if you got the last corner correct, you'll be rewarded with the opportunity to pass the car in front of you if necessary. It's the slowest corner on the track. With the elevation change to this corner, you'll turn in with plenty of grip here, but lose it all on exit as the camber of the road falls away from you. So get to the throttle as soon as you can, because your time to do so is limited. This is an excellent spot on the circuit because even if you have a car to your inside, if you can just hold them a little bit tight to the inside, you can open up the exit, get the power down sooner, and win the drag race into turn one. 
The national circuit is identical to the international layout, with the exception of the final hairpin. The national configuration changes it to this double right hander corner that doesn't really add too much to the lap and actually makes passing more difficult. In my opinion, this circuit isn't worth testing all too much and I think the international layout is far superior. As for the third of the knock hill layouts, it's the triumph. You will get instantly confused as the game makes you drive backwards down the front straight to get onto the layout. Why they didn't just make the pit lane go the other direction, I'm not quite sure. But that is also probably the most exciting part of the circuit because the track is just like a 1 18th scale Pocono and turning right. That's literally it. <laughs> to answer the question from the start of the video though, is Knock Hill Racing Circuit worth your 15 US dollars? Honestly, I think it depends on what you race. The Virtual Racing School GT Sprint Series goes there in week 1, so we'll instantly see how a GT3 field handles the track, but in my opinion I don't think that's a well suited track. I think this track is better suited to the lower end vehicles. If that's your cup of tea, then yes, I absolutely give this track a recommendation. If you're a fan of GT3 or faster type cars, I do think you may struggle to truly enjoy this circuit as it is oh so tight. I just can't see the racing being all that good around here in those quicker cars, but hey, I would be glad to eat my words and be proven wrong. Let's wait and see.